Hello, what's going on YouTube? This is J Money here, and I'm bringing you guys a, a video topic or discussion, whatever, regarding um, this uh, upcoming uh, booster set, Flames of Destruction, and whether or not um, it is, you know, acceptable, or whether or not it is actually worth buying or investing in. Now, um, when I when I go ahead and do this, uh, I want to go ahead and mention a few things. One. Um, one we have, uh, what we have going on for us, um, what makes a good set? What makes a really good set? Well, um, you can argue that, you know, a good set would include a bunch of cards that a bunch of decks can use, and that may be correct, but if they're all a little rarity, then, you know, you'd be better off buying the singles, but what makes a good set that's worth buying and investing in? Well... The answer to that question is, you know, the amount of good ultra rares and the amount of good secret rares that are in a set. And so far, if we look at all the secret rares for, for starters, um, our eight secret rares are the o, the Ojama Trap card, the Super Buddy Force, which I cannot find, um, the, go, the new, new Ghost Girl, um, Ibli, uh, Infinite Trans Science, uh, Nightmare Griffin, Nightmare Unicorn, the Top Logic Monster, and Vampire Sucker. Now, out of those cards, I would say at least six of them we would not mind pulling, and only three of them we would really want, really, really want to pull. So there's about three chase cards in this set, and the other in um, or three chase secret rares, and about three of them, you know, are good secret rares you know that will actually retain some value and the other two being the vampire sucker and the ojama you don't care to pull now most sets as of late have only had two chase secrets and the rest of the cards in that um set um set were throwaways except with the exception of um uh what is it uh spellbook of knowledge from uh code of the duelist because that still is holding value you know, every now and then you will get a really good ultra rare that holds something. And it's the same with the Zode, uh, Soul 2 Tales of the Normal Knights. It's the same thing. And it might get a rise in popularity in just a second. But not only am I going to go over, um, you know, if the set is worth investing in, but I do want to go over three decks that we should probably prepare for and look out for and not overlook. Because even though we're not getting Crystron Needle Fiber, um, Cherubini or Jasmine, that doesn't mean that any new decks won't come up in the woodworks within the next month. So, but, um, we're gonna get started, you know, we already established that these secret rares are gonna be pretty good. Now, Corrupt Idli is a weird one for me, because I know not every deck uses it, however, um, it can and a lot of times can easily be win condition if the um, if the uh, if the deck that's using it you know it depends on the deck that uses it it can easily be a win condition and so with that being said I wouldn't be surprised if any deck in the future that abuses Troy Mares or whatnot uh, starts to really start abusing Ibli and start winning games because of it and you know this will start to um, go higher in price. So right now, you know, people are averaging it at about $25 to $30 maximum. And this might even be just for pre-release, but I truly believe that in the future, Ibli will end up going up in value and maybe even surpass Griffin and Unicorn um, simply because of, you know, again, you know, we don't know what the future holds when it comes to um, the Vrains era of, era of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but we have not entered our really, really busted um, link spam format just yet. And so Ibli might be a key piece in that. And, you know, that's going to be something that people need to uh, keep an eye on. Because, again, this card might end up um, surpassing Unicorn or Griffin in price. Not right now, but in the near future. So that's be something I would pick up and actually hold on to. That's just my personal opinion. Then you've got the uh, Ghost Girl. The Ghost Girl... I would argue that Call by the Grave is better, but, you know, there is one thing that the Ghost Girl hasn't, 
uh, has overcall by the grave and that's the fact that you can literally use a turn one if you don't win the dice roll and that's really that, that's really it I mean there's not really much uh, to it on that one but all in all it's still a ghost girl it's going to have its format and I predict it will have its format the moment Cherubini hits the scene so you know again it's not being valued too too high like the rest of the like uh, Ghost Ogre and, and Ash Blossom was but it can easily spike to 40 maybe even $50 depending on the format and depending on when we get Cherubini and what format that's gonna um, shape up to be Infinite Transcience it's just a better version of Effect Veiler because you can use it during both, both turns uh, from the hand. You know, granted the drawback is you have to control no cards to play it. Um, so if you wanted to play out a combo first just to beta and negate, um, you can't really uh, drop this from the hand because you control cards. Now that is the only you know beef I have with this card, but it is still a good card nonetheless. Um, you know, again, it's it's just basically another effect veiler, except a little bit better. Um, I personally wouldn't pick this up. That's just me. I know a lot of other people would. Um, simply because, you know, it's a secret, it's a trap card, it's a better version of a veiler. Um, I never liked effect veiler. I never liked effect veiler. I always played around it. And I always found any card in 2018 that just, you know targets any monster and just negates its effects i always found that just very underwhelming in 2018 that's why i personally wouldn't see myself picking this up but other people would so griffin there's really not too much to say about it it's a floodgates thing if you can somehow manage to keep it out of the um uh, extra monster zone and have it in the main monster zone then your opponent is going to be in for one hell of a fight. Not only that, but it can also recover a spell trap from the graveyard, which is um, which is really good, especially if you want to use something more than twice. Granted, you can't flip it over the same turn, but you know, you know, it, it sets up for next turn. In case your board gets broken, let's say you use Griffin to set up like another monster reborn or something like that. You know that could be good you know that could be good for establishing some sort of comeback so if your board gets broken you just go draw a standby and you know go into main phase flipping reborn and bring back bring back something like a griffin you know to floodgate your opponent out if they don't have anything co-linked then you know that can easily put you back in the game but you know there's there's not too much to say about griffin we all know it's good a unicorn i did not expect this to be a secret rare but nonetheless it's still really good. I mean, it removes cards off the field. I can see more Trickstar players using Scapegoat into this. You know, uh, starting with the, uh, what was it, Link Spider, going into a proxy, and either Link Rebo or another Link Spider, and using the proxy, and the Link Spider or Karibo that's in the bottom, to go into this, um, to go into this Unicorn and discard a card, you know, spin something back in, now granted, um, I personally would try to find something that points upward so I could, um, you know, make full use out of the unicorn so I can get the co-link, but, you know, off of a scapegoat alone, given the carpool we have, I don't think that it'll be, um, I don't think it would be too possible, so, you know, but nonetheless, keep on the lookout. Uh, next we're, we got, um, Top Logic Tresbina now. You know, this card is one of those cards that we don't mind to pull. We don't mind pulling as a secret rare, but it's not something that we necessarily want. But it can easily shoot up in value in the future, depending on if Alter Guys stay in the game, if True Draco stay in the game. Uh, a little bit longer than what we would like. Um, and any other back row heavy format or any deck that, or format that has a really good back row heavy deck that's you know a nice meta contender this old card will always find some sort of space whether it be in the sideboard or in the main board depending on how much space you have in your extra deck so i would honestly pick up about two copies of this and then you know hold one as you like set one aside and keep one you know in your main or side whatever in your you know, bulk just in case you need to bring it out and, you know, keep the second one just to hold because I, I, I'm pretty sure this is going to increase in value uh, as time goes on. 
And so, Vampire Sucker again, um, unless you're playing zo like Lightshorn Zombies or something, any sort of 60 card zombie deck, I don't see much use in this uh, this card being used in multiple decks. Now onto the Ultra Rares, we got about three of them that are really notable. We have Nightmare Goblin. Um, I see this as a uh, staple in a lot of decks that use extra decks, kinda. It depends on the deck. Now I see this as the card like, um, what was it, uh, Spellbook of Knowledge, where it can actually retain uh, its value over time. It might not go down all that much. Um, there's again, there's, and it it's a little bit difficult. Um, actually getting its draw effect off simply for the fact that most of the time when you go into into goblin um, you want to get another monster from hand to field to start up a you know a combo or if you need like multiple cards to hit the board you know going into something like a link one or a link two that points down then going into another link two that's pointing somewhere on the side and then going into this to get the draw it's a bit much I'm not gonna lie so I I mean I mean getting into this for a draw you know for an extra normal summon would be extremely difficult um, especially if you need this to get a combo going so when you're going for this effect don't expect to get the draw all that much I, I honestly uh, don't just don't do it you'll be disappointed um, next we have the um, Moss Reborn for Link Zones um, it's, it's quite simple. If you have any, you know, Link monster pointing to any of your zones, you know, in the main monster zone, obviously, you just target any monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Literally just that. I mean, it's a harmless turn, so, you know, I would want three, but if you open multiples, you know, that kind of sucks. But then again, even if you do, if you're playing this, you're likely playing Troy Mares or Nightmares, whatever, so... You have discard fodder there, it's fine. You know, you can reset it with Griffin. You know, it's fine. You know, you get your draws, you get your effects. You have free discard fodder. It's whatever. I mean, and on top of that, you get to see this more often. So, it's good. Uh, what is the last ultra rare I wanted to look at? It was Goblin. The oh yeah, Ultra Guys Multi Faker. Ultra Guys Multi Faker um, is... It's multi faker. Altergeist is a um, was already semi competent, you know. Before multi faker, I played against a couple of Altergeist players. They really knew what they were doing, and you know they were they were just you know they were just solid. And I can't wait to see what multi faker is going to bring the Altergeist deck. Now, granted, the deck is super trap heavy, but we also have Red Reboot, so you know coming in the same set. So I don't know how that's going to work out, just hope they don't have the, their little in-deck here. Now, I want to go on to the decks, the three decks that we should really look out for. Now, I do have one honorable mention, but um, this could easily change in the future, but for right now, I thought this deck was going to be, you know, you know, doing some things and all that, you know. And that honorable mention is Lair of Darkness Infernoids, you know, Lair Noids. Lair Infernoids, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, I really um, anticipated that deck a lot. I anticipated um, how good and how strong and how versatile it can be because you can literally play any size engine of Lair Darkness stuff that you want. You can literally just play field spells. You can play just field spells and really take advantage of just the Infernoids themselves, so you don't really have to take away from your main strategy all that much. Since the Infernoids naturally tribute, you don't have to play any niche uh, cards that combo well with Lair of Darkness because Infernoids just do it naturally. You know, you could just play three field spells and leave it at that. You could also play field spells plus Lilith to get your Void Feast out of the deck and just really go in, you know. Auto search, it dodges Ash Blossom because it just sets it onto the field and all that good stuff. But you can also use, um, you can also use that Cerberus thing, you know, the one where you discard to get the field spell. If you want to make the field spell more consistent, or if you have it, you can sack it off 
and you can draw a card. And you know, you empty your board, making your Infernoids a little bit more alive. You got an upstart goblin and all that good stuff. Or you can sack off your opponent's monster, get a draw, uh, whatever. And, you know, or you can get a Diabolos. You know, there's, or you, you know, and you can make your engine just a little bit bigger and play Diablos, but again, there are, there are some problems with the deck. One being, you know, you not only have to get Lair of Darkness, uh, but you have to have like Void Feast or some really good Infernoids. And it's like, like, there's so many instances where you have like one piece, but you're missing another piece. And this one piece can make it better, but you didn't draw it. And, you know, um, I started to realize that it requires a little too much, but that's why it is in the honorable mentions. Now, you know, f to the first deck that we all need to look out for. So even though we don't have Neo Fiber and all that, we got to look out for Alter Guys. Alter Guys, uh, for the for those of you, you know, okay, I'll just name all three decks. Alter Guys, Brandish Maiden, and Goki Troymares. Those are the three decks that we really need to look out for. And now, why do I think that is? Well, for those of you who don't know how Alter Guys plays, they revolve around these three cards right here. They revolve around um, this this monster right here, which is a Magispector Kieran on at three copies. You know, it's a Kieran on crack. Granted, it can be targeted, but any deck with a Magispector Kieran is weird. So. You know, I'm not going to read it out. I mean, I have it up on the um, screen here to where you can read. But you can target any Ultra Guys card, including those trap cards that are all remaining face up and bounce them as well. Now, you combo that with this card to where you can sit here and you can reveal this on an attack. And you can special it. You can negate an effect. And then you can use a Magic Spectre Kieran to bounce this card again. And reveal it and special it again because this is not a hard once return you can negate you can uh, stun another card negate that to negate that effects and um, yeah and while when you reveal this and special it the attacks are negated you know as well so that's something else you gotta you know keep in mind the attacks will be negated um, and monster effects will be negated because you can when you special you can target any monster not just the monster that attack you can target any monster and just stun its effects so um when you have that combined with the magic spectre kieran you got yourself a nice little stun lock here and you're constantly bouncing cards you're negating cards but then you combo with the last card being protocol and with that being said if your opponent has any sort of disruption cards um what like trigate wizard or gamma seal or solemn strike or Otis vortex dragon Ain't nothing being negated. You're not negating anything. You know, all the all the um, Alter Guys cards will go off because, you know, you know your Alter Guys cards that activate can't have their effects negated, no, and all that stuff. So it comes really well with Skill Drain as well, which they can easily play. And not only this, but if this needs to, it can send a card to negate a monster effect. So. That is something to really look out for. Not only that, but again, it's a trap card that can stay face up on the field, so the uh, Magic Spectre Kieran can bounce it whenever it's done. You know, um, you know, you um, the best combo really in terms of stun power is uh, special summoning this and getting an attack, then using the Magic Spectre Kieran to bounce another card that hasn't swung or hasn't attacked at all. You know, while you have protocol on the field, so no vortex, no none of that is uh, negating anything. And then if a third monster attacks, you can reveal this, drop it, and negate that attack, target another monster on the board, negate its effects, and all that. And then during the draw phase, you can just um, bounce either, you know, the, um, the hand trap, or you can bounce the protocol and just reset the protocol. And just go in on your opponent. And Alter Guys, you know, just literally those three cards alone is a very, very, very potent combo. And that's not only, you know, talking about all the other trap cards or any of the other Alter Guys cards, you know, being Milu Seek or the one that sets a trap from the deck, let alone Multifigure, because Multifigure makes this consistent. It gets you literally anything you need. If you flip Protocol, 
you get Kieran and yeah, things start happening. So um, next, you know, we have the Brandish or yeah, because Brandish is Brandish. We all know about Brandish. Um, now, I don't know all that much about him, but I do know um, that you have to control no monsters in your main monster zones to really use these cards. So, I mean, this is a deck full of all spell cards. Not, um... So, not, you would think that the answer is to use anti-spell, fragrance, and, um, imperial order. Things like that just to shut down spell cards, or things like macrocosmos. But, really, it's quite simple to shut these down, and it's something that I play in my main deck already, and that's kaijus. Um, not only are you kaijuing the, um... The, uh, the, uh, Shizuku or the Kigari to where you don't, um, trigger this guy because the, uh, Brandish main rain in the graveyard, you, if it leaves, if, you know, if it can summon itself out of the grave when a Link monster Brandish main and leaves the field by a card effect or destroyed by battle, and since, you know, Kaiju's tributing over other things isn't a card effect, not only does this not trigger... But since they now control a card in the main monster zone, they can't use any of their other Brandish cards. So, you know, and I play I play World Chalice, and I play multiple Kaijus in the main deck. So, if I open a Kaiju against a um, against Brandish, I basically win the game. Um, but that but that's not to uh, underestimate this deck because, like Zodiacs, you can play this pure, or you can splash it. You can splash it in other decks. Uh, especially if they don't really, if if they are lacking, if they just want just their engine cards and the rest of the cards to deck thin, this is the deck to do that. This is the deck to deck thin um, and support, you know, set engines and such, um, such as Invoked Infernoids and all that. So you do have to keep in mind that this um, engine that uses... Um, Really, these cards, they use like two to three Hornet Bit. They definitely use three Startup Engage. They'll probably use one Jamming, one Afterburner, and one Widow Anchor, and that's it. Uh, but if you're if you're going against a pure build, just know Kaiju's literally out this whole deck. If you Kaiju them, you better OTK them. That's all I have to say about that. So um, Next, we have the Goki Choi Mirrors. Um, since Izode or Izold, whatever you want to call it, works really good with the Gokis, you're special summoning these things from the deck. Not only that, but um, Gokis is a deck that just has one of the best reborn spells, like in the in the whole game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Literally targeting two of any, like targeting two Gokis and special summoning them for no reason is absurd. It's absolutely ridiculous how that can work. Um, now, how how this deck gets going, um, they want to get all their Goki cards onto the board. They want to get one or two onto the board so they can not only search rematch, but um, uh, start pitching cards for the Troy Mirrors, getting rematch, summoning ones that didn't activate their effects. Now, you do have to know when you want to activate the Goki effects when they go to the graveyard. That's something you need to really uh, study up on uh, as to when because knowing when is actually really important when you're playing the Troy Mare version of Gokis because if you use all of the effects and you play rematch and you link you and you don't and you already use the effects then you know you're losing out on a lot of value and you lost a lot of steam along the way especially if you don't have a firewall dragon on the board but nonetheless Gokis was you know was always like it had their deck design was really good because literally every single goki that went from field to grave searched another goki card and that was just absolutely amazing and then you have the best reborn card and you combine that with cards like soul charge monster reborn a world legacy inheritor and things like that and you got yourself you know, non-stop recurring monsters, and you can easily uh, extra link your opponent, and that's what Goki Choi Mares do, especially um, when you have things like Firewall Dragon being able to summon the other Gokis that you searched after you played your rematch. So, 
With that being said, these are the three decks that you want to look out for within the next month. Um, so let me know what you guys think about what I mentioned, not only about these decks that, you know, we need to watch out for, but about Flames of Destruction on whether or not you think it's worth investing in. I personally think it is. Now, whether or not, you know, depends on what you're looking for, you know, me, it, generally every set has sick, like one or two okay secrets to really good secrets and the rest are shitty secrets. This set has only two shitty secrets and that's, and you know, some pretty good ultra rares. So I think that's some real value that you can get behind. And you can really make a safe bet when it comes to dropping money on a booster box. Because, you know, you're actually likely to get your your money back or, or get what you're looking for. Because there's so many cards that we would pull that we wouldn't actually mind pulling. So, thank you guys for watching. This is Jay Money, and I am signing out.